Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of the beginner's guide of data science, ML, and AI. So in this episode, I want to dive into this problem of hallucination in the RAG algorithm that a lot of people are facing and even my students, they ask me a lot of questions in regarding to this problem. So I thought to use this video to discuss a little bit about what's a good plan when that happens. So retrieval augmented generation is an algorithm that instead of fine tuning your own model, which is costly, you could use retrieval based algorithm to take a look at the question user asks in the chatbot and retrieve similar content, relevant content from the database that prior the experiment you built, get a similar context, and then instruct the large language model to answer the question based on the content. So that retrieval idea come from the similarity search based on the user question in your database. So that's how that algorithms work. Now, what if you ask a question that uh, even though you wire the whole system together and the answer that's coming out of the system, just not really what you're expecting. So what do you do when that happened, right? Is that really hallucination or is that a problem of database or is that a problem of the RAG algorithm? What's really going on, right? So in this episode, I'm going to dive into what that problem looked like. And if I were you guys, if I were in that situation, what would I do? So with that being said, let's turn our attention to the screen. So first things first, I want to read a PDF document that perhaps have some sort of information, have some sort of story in there that I want to build, I want to scrape to create that vector database. So let me show you the PDF a little bit. For the sake of explainability and how I could uh, show you guys what's right, what's wrong, I'm going to create a complete fake story. There are two stories in this PDF document. They each has a page. So this is page one of the PDF document. It talks about a submerged world of New York City in 2080. Uh, this guy here, Johnny Storyteller, that's our guy in the first main story, navigates the aquatic avenues in his one-man submarine. And then he basically delivers mails. So he's a courier. So that's the story, right? It talks about New York City. It talks about everything under the water. It talks about this guy, right? John Storyteller. That's it. That's the story. Now I'm gonna give you a second piece of information, right? Second piece of information is 200 AD ancient China was a realm of wonders and dragons where the skies were streaked with the majestic creatures as commonly as roads were tread by horses in the other lands. And then our man here, Thomas Wingless, a man of the future with no dragon, right? And then found himself transported or whatever, teleported back in time. And then he has to navigate the world, right? Uh, through the foreign land. So that's the second story. These two stories are completely made up. They don't correspond to each other whatsoever. They have their own main character. They have their own environment. So I'm going to use this PDF document to build a database and then to retrieve some information based on what question I'm answering and show you guys what's right, what's wrong. And if the system gets the answer wrong, what would I do? So that's a PDF document. I load that in my collab environment, stories.pdf, I read that in, and then I scrape the content. So after I scrape the content, you can look at the length. Here it says number two. Well, that makes sense because there are two pages of the PDF. I designed the code such that every page has its own content. So you look at the first one, bracket zero, Python starts the first one with zero. Uh, it says, oh yeah, in the submerged world of New York City 2080, John Storyteller navigates the aquatic avenues. Okay, so all the content of the PDF is now in this string here that we're seeing on our screen. So whatever information that story has now is in there. Now we can also look at the second one. Bracket one in Python means the second entry. And then here it says, ah, in 200 AD, ancient China was a realm of wonder and dragons. Great, that's the second story. Now it's in there, right? We're ready. Okay, so now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna design an API call to call ChatGPT, and then I'm gonna design a prompt engineer function to tell the computer to say, hey, look, we want a human assistant pair, uh, also known as a question answer pair, based on each page. So I'm gonna instruct it to write five sets of questions. And the reason I do this is because in practice, 
there's always going to be a limit, whether it's a five or 10 or 50 or 100, there's always going to be a limit. It's not going to be unlimited, right? So whatever content that you're building, that you're scraping from your PDF document, that limit has to be there. It cannot be unlimited, right? So that's why I put five there, just to be a little bit limited so that you guys can see what that constraint do to the response of the algorithm. So now, let's say I do five sets, right? What that means is I can send that function through the loop and every page, it will give me five sets of uh, human assistant question answer pair. So I did that and then uh, same length of the raw content. Uh, and then you can look at the bracket zero, uh, it will look like this, right? Human, uh, there's a question here and then assistant, there's a story. Trying to uh, come up with a question answer pair based on the content that's scraped from the PDF. Great. So that's the uh, information that's now converted into question answer pair. However, since this is limited to five, you can assume that some of the information is missed out, right? Because if you look at the uh, PDF document, every page has like what? Uh, four or five different paragraphs, right? If I'm forcing the document, if I'm forcing the algorithm to condense this into just five question answer pair, uh, probably something's gonna get missed out. And that will be the first missing spot, the first flaw when you're wiring the system together, which is this number that you're asking your algorithm to create that training data, you are missing out. You're having less number of question answer pair created than the fruitful information from that one page of PDF document. So that will be one thing I will say that's the first flaw that you need to check. If you believe that every page of your PDF document has more than five sets of question answer pair, then you better instruct that clearly, right? And you better play around because it's not like every page has the same length either, right? So you, you gotta check that. And that will be one thing that you say, you might even have to create your own PDF document for that matter, right? So all these things matter, all these things play into the equation, right? So let's continue, that's one flaw. Now what I'm gonna do is I use this function to save all these content into text files. And the reason I do that is because in the format of a text file, uh, the size is much smaller than PDF document. So it just makes the whole system run a little bit faster. So that's why I typically scrape the PDF document and then I turn that into some sort of text file. So that's what that is. And then once the text file exists, as you can see here, file zero, file one, they are saved in this folder on the left-hand side in the output files folder. And now they're there, right? They're in the directory. So I'm gonna use Langchain document loader. And here there's a library called text loader that can allow me to basically create a vector database based on the text files that's being loaded in. So I set up a directory, I load the files in one by one, and this assumes that you're a text file. And then you can essentially build your vector database. And here, the package I'm using is Chroma. So chunk size, that's of course assumption, right? A thousand is a made up number. If you don't like a thousand, you can change whatever you want. Additionally, there's also this embedding layer. Embedding layer here, I'm just gonna use a default one. It's called a mini ML. And you could come back and debate about it, right? You could say, hey, you don't like that. You're gonna switch to something else, right? Totally fine, no problem. You could totally switch that. That's assumption that I'm throwing in. No one says that's absolutely the right one, right? So that would be one point to check. And I will say that's one assumption that we made in the system. So once that's done, after these lines of code, you have your Chroma database and that database is ready for query. So first of all, let me just throw some random questions that I'm not gonna try to make any connections with the database whatsoever. I'm assuming that I haven't seen the database, right? So I know the document is here. Uh, what I'm likely gonna ask is, okay, who's John Storyteller, right? That would be probably the first question I'm asking. So let's try it. Who's John Storyteller? and maybe I have a typo in there, that's okay. It's gonna say, oh yeah, what does John Storyteller symbolize in the submerged world? Uh, the answer is probably gonna be, oh yeah, in his submarine symbolizes a lifetime in the submerged world of New York City. So this is coming from a portion of the database that likely is condensed from the first story. Now, you can argue, you can say, hey, look, I think that's a bad answer, right? You can look at the document, you say, oh yeah, I think the answer should be, uh, he's a person who navigates the aquatic avenue. 
and nowhere here says aquatic avenue. It says submarine, but it doesn't quite say aquatic. That's okay, you can have that conversation, right? But who's right, who's wrong? This is what I would recommend people to do. You don't do the similarity search. You do similarity search with score. So you take the same question, and then you throw that down here, and then you run the same query, it will give you some sort of docs. You print out the total length of docs, it turned out there are four things in there. So here, I'm using the first entry, and I'm just gonna show you very quickly what that thing is that it returned for you as a similar content. And say, hey, look, ah, this is a similar content. Question, what does John Storyteller symbolize? Assistant, John Storyteller in his submarine symbolizes a lifeline in the submerged world of New York City, blah, 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 right? And it may or may not be the answer you like. And in this case, I actually believe it's not something what I'm looking for because I'm looking at the first sentence and I'm asking a question about the first sentence. However, this question is what I believe is based on my intuition and whatever previous experience that I'm coming from to read this document. It may or may not be what a vector database has, right? So how do we know what's the discrepancy here? You have to look into the vector database and you have to see if the question that the human is asking is existent and present in the database that you have at hand. So that's why you need to take a look at, so that's why you need to run this function using similarity search with score. That will give you all those information. So I have the code here that can basically enter any question and then it will give you a table of context source as well as the score. So let's take a look at that. Let me take the same question, who's John Storyteller? And then let me enter here. I'm gonna run this and then it's gonna create this uh, CSV file uh, on the left-hand side, I'm gonna open that up. And this is the output that's coming out of the vector database, right? The Chroma database that we created. So you see content, that is the portion of the document that the algorithm believes it's similar. The source is coming from whatever text file that you created. In this case, on the left-hand side directory, we see file zero, we see file one, so the source is just gonna be one of those two things. And then on the right-hand side, the third column, there's a score. This score symbolizes how close this content is coming out of database comparing with the user question. And the number here says 0 0.97. And this number decreases if it's better answer and it increases if the answer gets bad. It's not relevant whatsoever. Right? So here's a comparison. The algorithm actually thinks that what does John Storyteller symbolize? That portion of the content is probably what you are asking. Now, you may not like it. If you don't like it, ask yourself, is your question in the database? If yes, then it should give you the correct answer. We're gonna run a test to demonstrate that. If it's not, and in this case it isn't, right? You read the document and you believe the question is in there, but that question was never in there in the database, right? Where is the question? It's not in there, right? The question says, who is John Starter? There's no such question in your database. So that's why you see the score is 0 0.97, and I can tell you based on experience, that's not really a high score, right? So now what is a high score? What is a good looking question? Unfortunately, good looking question means you're asking the question that's in the database. So let me show you an example. What about this chunk of sentence, right? What if I'm just copy pasting this chunk that may or may not even be a question, right? It makes complete no sense. I'm copying this, this is like a hashtag and maybe there's a question here that's not even a question, right? It ends on a comma, right? So I'm copying that and then I'm going to the query here and I'm pasting that in there, right? Let's say that's something that the user entered, right? Guess what? It will give you a very, very good score. So I'm gonna shut that down and I'm gonna rerun this code. And once it's done, I'm gonna give you the CSV. See, now this first content, which is the same content from a database, gives you a score of 0 0.02. That means that the algorithm computed the math that the content from the Chroma database that you created that it's present in your computer has a very, very high similarity score 
with the query that the user entered. Even though the query makes no sense, it probably is not a question. It has hashtag or whatever other things in there that's just not meaningful. It will still give you a very good score. 0 0.02 means it's almost similar, almost identical. And that makes sense, right? Because I physically copied something from a Como database and I enter in there. So that's how the vector database works. It's looking for similarity, not looking for what you believe it's the implication of the original document. So I really want to mention that, and that is the key things here that people think the algorithm is hallucinating. It's not hallucinating. It's because you type in the question that is not a good match word by word in the vector database. Now, what's the solution? The solution is to get that in the vector database, right? That's why large companies spend billions of dollars to build a database at the first place. But what do you think that's for? Right? Is it for fun? No, it's to have the user information, to get that information into the vector database, not just the original document. And last thing I want to mention is, uh, this is in a, a table format, right? So you could very well return that along with the answer in the chat box. And you can tell people, say, hey, look, you know, we believe that's highly relevant, uh, that is okay, right, 0 0.4, it's probably okay, it's not that relevant uh, comparing with the first one. And then the next one is uh, maybe a little bit far apart, right, because this uh, is probably come from the same document, but it doesn't really answer the question, right, it's just not similar. So these things, you could very well return that back to the user in the chatbot interface, and then you can say, oh, this is a reference. If you don't like it, and if you believe this is the wrong answer, let's survey. Right? Let's survey your answer. Let's talk about how to get your answer in there and let's build a database. Let's refine it, right? So that would be a rational conversation. That would be a conversation that give you an actionable item. So what I see a lot of people do is they are very binary about it. They either like this so much or they hate it to their guts. I would say neither of those are the correct understanding. The correct understanding is just whatever database that you're building, is your question in there? If your question is not in there, then refine database, right? So this is supposed to be a very straightforward pipeline. And I believe this should be able to shed some lights to help you understand how to move forward from the situation when you enter a question and the chatbot is not giving you the correct one. So hopefully this video sheds some lights on the hallucination situation that people have been seeing from a RAG algorithm. And if you liked the video, give a like and stay tuned. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.